friends. Welcome to the Full Voice Live Office Hours. Uh, we are talking all about uh, teaching harmony singing skills. And if we have not met, my name is Nikki Loney from Full Voice Music. And Full Voice Music is a small but dedicated publishing company from Canada. We specialize in creating resources for young singers and for teachers. And teacher training is one of our priorities here. Uh, sharing wonderful pedagogy, best practices. Uh, we partner with academics and teachers from around the world, and we love sharing teaching strategies. And our live office hours has been one of our new features where you ask all the questions and we do our best to answer them or at least give you the resources to get those answers. I want to introduce my dearest friend and colleague, Mim Adams. Mim, please say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mim, Mim is exactly 13 hours ahead of me. She is on the other side of the world right now, but she still woke up early to help me with our presentation. So I want to let everybody know who is here right now to stay to the very end because we have draws for our upcoming workshops and some of our courses. So you could win um, access to the workshop or course of your choosing. So please stay to the very end. We have a fun draw for everybody. So let's get started. Uh, I want to thank everybody for your questions about teaching uh, people in heart to sing in harmony. It is all of your questions that has put together uh, this that has allowed me to put together this presentation. So it is all based on the questions that you asked. Now, one of the things that I know that you know is that harmony singing, singing with others is joyous. It is one of the absolute joys of singing. And as a voice professional, I am certain that you have had some incredible moments on stage with your friends, with your colleagues, and that has shaped your career. I uh, I spent most of my 20s and 30s as a professional background vocalist and a session singer. And a lot of the studio work that I got had to do with me being able to sing in harmony. And while I would like to tell people that I was naturally inclined to sing in harmony, um, the truth, and I know that you know this, this is a fun fact, singing in harmony is not innate. We are not born magically with this skill or not. It is a learned skill that requires exposure to singing, singing with others, listening to harmonies, and developing both singing skills and audiation abilities. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I, I had so many experiences. I had a lifetime of exposure to singing with my family around the campfire. I was blessed to have all the way through elementary through to graduating high school musical programs that were vibrant. I was singing harmonies in grade five and I was learning jazz harmonies in grade nine and all of those experiences, all of those experiences gave me those skills when I got to college and started working professionally. It wasn't, it was, I wasn't, I just didn't wake up one day with all these skills. So I want to just mention that some of the considerations that we have to kind of keep in the back of our mind when we are working with singers is that they may not have had those wonderful experiences that we have. And I do want to remind everyone that the pandemic had an impact on those experiences. So if you, if there, if you have students who are in grade three, four, five, they were in the earliest stages of their education and it was not typical exposure to music, to singing, to choirs. 
So you could be working with singers who maybe you think they should be able to handle these harmony singing skills, but we need to remember that if they weren't exposed to this type of singing or these types of experiences, then we have this incredible opportunity. I always believe challenges are just really great opportunities. Just remember that. So we have this amazing opportunity to support them and give them new opportunities to learn to sing in harmony. Now, out of all the questions, this was number one. How do you develop these independent singing skills with our with students of any age too? I do want to stress that I'm not just talking about children in this presentation. All of these strategies apply to any age, any beginner singer. These are not limited to children. So first thing I want to mention is that we covered a lot about uh, singing confidence and pitch accuracy in our very first live office hours. And this presentation is actually on our YouTube channel and you can watch it at your leisure. I go deep into developing confident singing skills. I'm gonna go through it today, but I'm gonna focus on some different things. So I highly recommend that you check that out. Um, but the big, the big thing I wanna say about helping our students develop their independent singing skills and the top recommendation I made, it's trippy, but it's true. You want to allow your students to sing unaccompanied. You wanna normalize singing unaccompanied. We are, we probably discovered this. I certainly discovered this when the pandemic started and my, my studio moved online. And all of a sudden, because I couldn't play with my students, I realized how much I had been over supporting them. So in our lessons, we have lots of opportunities or in our classrooms or with our choirs, we have lots of opportunities to normalize singing without assistance. So this could be voice to voice exercises, simple call and response, call and answer activities where it is your voice that they're listening to and then their own voice that they're listening to. This is so important. Unaccompanied warm-ups. How many times are we not only playing the warm-ups for our students, but we are singing along with them? Now, while we might want to teach them a new exercise or a new activity, we want to eventually kind of take away all the supports. So we start by introducing it. We start by singing it a few times. Maybe we play it. But then when we're working on our exercises or activities, we start to take that, that support away. Maybe we only play them a chord and they have to sing uh, the exercise on their own. Or maybe we only give them their first note and they have to sing the exercise. Now, if you have been singing and playing with your students and you decide to take away this support right away, I do not recommend that. You're gonna freak them out. So you wanna gradually take away, treat it as a little challenge. Hey, you're so good at this, let's try something new. You don't need my help like this. Now, one of the things that I love to do, especially with my teenagers, is isolate melodic fragments from their favorite songs. And what I say to my students is I say, what is your favorite line in this Taylor Swift song or whoever they're listening to or whatever piece there. What is your favorite line? What is your absolute favorite line that you love to sing? And then we isolate that line and we work on that line. We sing it unaccompanied. We change the tempo. We change keys. But again, we're normalizing taking a fragment and singing it without accompaniment. Solfege, the do, re, mi's with the hand signs. Any activity that helps them internalize sound in their bodies is gold. Soulfish flashcards. So on our website, there are free flashcards. You can put them up on a wall. You can use the mini flashcards on your desk. And while they're using the flashcards, they're singing unaccompanied away from the piano. One of the biggest challenges in our studios is that we tend to rush because we want our lessons to be productive. In our lesson pacing, we need to allow teacher guided review. 
And assigning things for practice does not replace teacher guided review. Our students need more review and more exposure and more repetitions of simple things than we think. So allowing students to do things successfully again and again helps to develop that confident singing ability. It takes time. And that's one of the things I wanna mention. These are skills that are cumulative. I never can say that word. They take a long time and a lot of exposure to develop. There's no quick fixes. There's no hacks. It is time intensive stuff, just like the experiences I had through, through decades of singing. Now, moving from that confident singing into this was the second, this was the, the second most asked question. How do you teach them to sing in harmony and what is the best way to help students stick to their harmony while that melody comes in and then they don't switch parts as soon as they hear something else? So this is a great question. This is a common challenge with our students and Patience is the first thing I want to remind everybody. Smiles and a sense of humor go a long way in the voice studio. But one of my favorite activities that helps singers, again, this is unaccompanied, is singing pedal tones. So a pedal tone is a repeated note. And what I love to do is we practice a little uh, fragment, very short, maybe three notes. And the student using solfege goes do, 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 and we were practice that. And I make them look at their hand and I make them listen to their voice. And then when they're ready, I quietly will sing the do, re, mi while they are singing the do, do, do. Now the first attempt is always a little freaky because I just threw something else for them to listen to. But the exercise is reminding them that they can focus on what they are doing in their body and learning to listen to what is happening beside them. Go slow, use very, very, very short little fragments. And when they get good at doing a repeated note, switch. Let them sing the do, re, mi, or any fragment. Maybe it's a do, mi, do. Any little fragments. This is a wonderful exercise and it's so very helpful. Repetition is the key. It's not going to be mastered in one or two tries. This could be a wonderful warm-up exercise for, a, for your students. Um, and I have done this with adults. So that, again, this is not just a child-based activity. My adults that come to me who want to learn to sing harmonies have to get used to hearing themselves and hearing the person beside them. So keep it simple. I love our good friend, Dr. Geneva Williams. She has a great saying, make easier, make easy, easier. So keep things as simple as possible. The other type of activity that's wonderful when you're ready to level up from singing pedal tones is ostinati parts. So an ostinato part is that repeated melody that is repeated and repeated. So in the email that I sent everybody, there was the pumpkin spice song. That's a free download. And the, the second line is both an, an ostinato part, plus it's a pedal tone. So whenever you have students who are new to singing harmonies, that's the part I always give them, the simplest part, and we practice it, we get used to it, and then we add the other parts in later. Again, go slowly, recognize that the first couple of tries are gonna be a hot mess, and that is okay. Lots of laughs, we're creating safe spaces for our students to explore, but there are beautiful, simple rounds that you can do both pedal tones or ostinato parts. So one of my favorite rounds and simple rounds and one that my kids really liked, my little small group classes, is Oh How Lovely Is The Evening. And it's a beautiful little one. Oh, how lovely is the evening, is the evening. 
The lovely thing about this one and what I like and why I use it is because line three is just the ding dong ding on the root note. So pedal tone, ostinato. So you've got two wonderful things there with that bottom line. So I might have a student just sing the ding dong ding on the D on the root while I sing the melody for them. Or I'll teach them the melody and then I'll sing the ding dong ding. So simple, simple, easy to learn rounds and canons. Um, and there's so many of them and we have lots of resources for this is a beautiful way to help them get used to hearing their voice, your voice or somebody else's voice. Now, this leads us into listening and audiation skills. So audiation is thinking in music or inner hearing. Some people define it like that. So if I were to say to you, I want you to think happy birthday in your brain right now. Right, you can hear that. You're singing it in your brain. Now, this is very interesting and very, this is a consideration we have to make. That hearing in our mind is challenging for young singers, just like nonverbal working memory or verbal working memory. That is a cognitive skill that requires practice and it is challenging for little ones. So keeping words in their mind, keeping pictures in their mind and keeping sounds in their mind is something that has to be developed. It takes time. So audiation is the foundation of music. It, it is being able to hear sounds, classify them, organize them and understand them. And this is so, so important. And this is one of the reasons why our singers struggle with holding that part. Because as soon as they hear somebody else singing something else, they don't have those audiation skills to kind of hear their own part in their mind. So they're gonna go, they're gonna jump ship and they're gonna drop onto the other part or they're gonna flip back and forth. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It means they're actually starting to make a connection and it's normal and it's okay. So with audiation skills, this is, there's, um, there's a lot of fun ways that you can develop this with your young singers. And I wanna share a little video of my uh, small group class and we are singing a little, this is, um, this is the Pizza Hut song, which is actually a Ram Sam Sam, um, but we changed the lyrics and it's got gestures. Um, but this, I use an audiation activity in this to help them internalize the sound. So here's, here's my small group class. Okay, okay here we go. Hi friends and colleagues, it's Nikki from Full Voice Music. And today I am with my vocal class, no, this is singing club class, and we are working on dynamics as well as internalizing the music. So we have a very serious song that we've been singing. Uh, it's a very serious, it's called a Pizza Hut song. <laughs> so, First, we're going to start with our quiet singing. Ready? A pizza hut, a pizza hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a pizza hut. Even quieter. Ready? A pizza hut, a Not whispering. A hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a pizza hut. Down loud. Pizza Wow. 
Okay, so I just wanted to I just wanted to point out something very interesting. Did you notice that as soon as I stopped singing, they stopped singing? Did you notice that? So that tells me that they have not solidified this song. It is not for a child. They haven't had enough experiences with it to sing it without my help. This reflects back on our lesson pacing. So we want to give our students ample review. They need to, they need to experience the song a lot. I would say it was probably another three or four weeks of classes before my singers would sing it if I stopped singing. It takes more time than we think. There's that nasty curse of knowledge that we forget how long it takes to learn these simple skills. So with this, now this is a cannon. This is a round. It does have harmonies if the McDonald's part goes over the Pizza Hut part. They are not ready to sing that yet. And that's one of the things I want to tell teachers. Just because students aren't ready to sing in harmony does not mean that we cannot use these songs as learning opportunities. They love these songs. My, and actually, I want to tell everybody, this was one of my first small group classes. The girls are seven and eight years old. They, I was having a very hard time getting them to sing out confidently. The Pizza Hut song was the icebreaker that finally got them to have some fun and sing out. So sometimes these little songs can be wonderful. They can be used for warm ups. They can be used for all sorts of listening and singing and music activities. They are so valuable. So you want to build your teaching toolbox of these fun short songs to help to use as tools in many, many different ways. Now, one of the other, um, one of the other, I'm just going to stop my share briefly. One of the other activities that I do for audiation, I didn't have a video of it, but I used to do it all the time. Uh, when you have a student, they've learned a song and you've got a backing track. You have a piece of like a, a folder or a piece of paper that is red. You have a folder or a piece of paper that is green. It's called red light, green light. And you get them to sing their song with their backing track. When you hold up the red piece of paper, they have to stop singing, but the track does not stop. The track does not stop. So they have to think about the song in their head and follow the recording, the accompaniment track. And then when you put the green light up or the green piece of paper up, then they can continue singing. This is harder than you may think. And for little ones, they have to concentrate. And full disclosure, I've done this with adults, and it's been tricky for some of my adults because as soon as that, as soon as that singing is done, they are again that those those hearing, those inner sounds, it's so it's a skill. It takes time, it takes practice. I'm gonna go back to my screen share here. Uh, here we go. Did I do that right? Gosh, I hope so. Um, for your older students, these are some of the things that I love to do with my teenagers. So guided listening or active listening. Active listening is when you are intensely listening and identifying the sounds and the music and all of the things that you hear when you're listening to a song. Guided listening is so important, and I have to tell you, you cannot assign this for homework. This is not a homework activity. This needs to be teacher guided for two reasons. One, if you assign it for homework, they won't do it. And two, quite often the finer details in the song 
are not apparent to our, our students. They're still learning. So one of the things that I love to do is I have them listen. We choose their favorite song. It could be a pop song. It could be a musical theater song. I get a lyric sheet of the lyrics of the song and we listen for the harmonies. And I get them to underline in the lyric sheet which lines have harmony on them and I get them to put a little arrow going up or down if the harmony is higher or the harmony is lower. I'll also get them to write in lyrics that are being sung that aren't part of the melody. You know how there's like a call and response or other lines. This is a fabulous lesson for your teenagers, especially pop songs have incredible harmonies. Musical theater songs have unbelievable harmonies, very complex. And a lot of times, because our singers are focused on the main melody, they are unaware of where they are. And then of course, the next challenge is to ask them to sing and pick out some of those harmonies. Now again, this is what I do with my older students, my teens, my adults. This would not be something that I would do necessarily with a young child. But this guided listening with the teacher is fabulous. And this is one of my go-tos when I need to have a no singing lesson because my students, maybe they're just getting over a cold or maybe they're really tired and they need to rest their voice. We can still have an incredibly productive lesson even though we're not singing and we are developing our audiation skills, our listening skills and our harmony singing skills. So this is one of my fun activities that I love to do that is just so effective for my older students. Um, now, many people were like, well, how do you get to, how do I explain harmony or how do you get them to understand the structure of harmony so that they can find their notes? This is a great question. And I'm just gonna pause this. If you're using the full voice workbooks, you're probably already doing what I'm going to demonstrate right now. Music theory and terminology can be introduced alongside any technical exercise, and it doesn't have to take up an entire lesson. So terms like scale, triad, arpeggio, five note scale, five note scale with a descending triad, all of those terms and allowing our students to recognize these melodic patterns is so helpful in helping them understand what's happening in harmony. And learning these terms and learning theory can be done in fun games. And this is my student Cole. He's seven going on eight. And this is the little activity that we did with him. Hello, everybody. It is Nikki from Full Voice Music with my favorite student, Cole, and we are playing Jarakdu. It's deadly. It's deadly. Sorry. Right. Now, would you say this is one of your favorite games? Yes, 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 yes. No, yes okay. Yes. So here we go. So we'll take a, an exercise out of there. Okay. What do we got there? What are we doing? Oh, yeah, show everybody. Show everybody what we're doing. Okay, back up, back up, back up. So what is that called? It's a green book. Yeah, so the exercise is from the green book, but now flip it over to take a, actually take a look at it. What's so, that? it's an... Triad. It's a real triad. Oh, nice. Yes, okay. So that means you gotta sing the triad. Okay, they get it, they get it. <laughs> so, ready? Uh, do you want to do a tonic so far, or do you want to just sing a triad just to over all? Tonic so far. Tonic so far. All right, so take it away. You can look at it if you have to. Beautiful, Ta-da! He's, he's like seven going on eight. So when you normalize identifying what they are and give them opportunities to sing, and you notice I gave him a choice. Do you wanna use solfege? Do you wanna just sing it to vowels? Um, for other students, you could use numbers, letter names, whatever they prefer. 
but they they can easily when, when you normalize not playing and singing all the time so in the voice studio we're often really concerned well really concerned one of our primary concerns is developing vocal ability but we can easily introduce musical concepts and foundations alongside of developing their vocal ability that has been our goal with the full voice workbooks since day one which has been a lot of days because Mim and I have been doing this for over 20 years. So that is, uh, that is one of the ways that we can help our students start to identify musical form and structure. That's one of the benefits of solfege is it helps them to discover the relationship between notes. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we recommend that system, but you can also do it with numbers um, as well. So now, um, I'm moving on to the next question. Many of you asked about, well, how do we do this in an online lesson? How can we, how can we help our students uh, sing harmonies? So the good news is um, that uh, our online students have to be a little more independent than our in-person ones. We aren't playing and singing with them in an online lesson. And for those of you that transitioned from in-person to online during the pandemic, like I did, there was a little bit of readjusting our expectations and how we supported our students. Now, I always like to tell teachers that you know, teaching online is different. It's not better, it's not worse, it's different. So we have to give them different types of support and we have to empower them to learn how to support themselves. So while we might not be able to sing together online, we can still work on harmony singing skills. So what I like to do is either record the like if we're saying we're working on the pumpkin spice song and i must have done this a dozen times during the pandemic i would if they were younger students i would record their parts and send it to them so that they could play their part on their side of the call they need to have another device they cannot stream the audio through the same device that they are using the zoom so whether that's a phone or an ipad they need to have two devices but one of my most successful activities was actually getting them to use their own devices and to record parts themselves. And I used to be, I'm super sarcastic with my teenagers. I used to say, why don't we use our devices for good instead of evil? And I would teach them. You'd be surprised. They've got these like, okay, I'm just gonna go off script here a little bit. Do you guys remember back? I'm, I mean, I'm like old. I mean, you, you had to like, I used to have to bring like a cassette tape recorder into my lessons. Okay, Molly's nodding. Okay, thank you for, thank you. I used to have to bring a cassette recorder and record on a cassette tape and a, like, we have re professional level recording studios in the palms of our hands. And yet many of our students do not know how to use them effectively. And it is never a wasted lesson to show them that there's a record, there's a, a memo recording app on your phone. What? That's crazy. And yes, I've had to tell my adults that too. So my really uh, fun uh, activity that I did was I would get them to record the ostinato part of the pumpkin spice song. So I would get their phones, show them how to get that, and they would have to sing pumpkin, pumpkin pie about 40 times. That in itself is a fabulous exercise because they can't speed up. Well, they can, but you don't want them to. So you're teaching them how to set a track and sing a track. And once they had done that on their side, they would then play that recording back. And then we would practice the different lines and singing the different harmonies. And there were wipeouts and, and train wrecks all over the place. But sure, as long as you kept with it, as long as we kept doing it. And I have to say, I had some students 
that actually took on the challenge and practiced their butts off and came back the following week and they were able to sing the lines really well. And some of my singers got together with their friends and taught them the pumpkin spice song. So it inspired them to share some harmony singing fun with their friends. So do not be afraid to teach your students that they have really amazing devices that can do things other than text their friends and share memes off of Instagram. Um, I wanted to just mention quickly, there were so many questions about teaching online. I just want to make sure, does everybody here who's teaching online know about Carly Walton and the Teach Music Online community? Oh, Christina says yes, she's giving thumbs up. Okay. Carly is probably the sweetest human you could ever meet. We've had her as a guest on the Full Voice podcast. She has been teaching teachers about online music businesses since before the pandemic happened. So she she wasn't she didn't jump on the boat when we had to. She's she's had an online studio since uh, 2019. So um, she has a three day studio system challenge. It's free. And she's going to show you some really cool things. I adore her. She is just delightful. And I, although my studio is online, I will refer everyone to Carly because she's got all of the resources available to you. I am going to be sending out an email after this presentation is over to all people that registered that's going to have links to all of the things I'm talking about. So if you're interested in signing up for Carly's three-day studio system challenge, it's fabulous. And I highly recommend you listen to her podcast and follow her on the socials. She is so lovely. Um, now, we're going to wrap up here because we're getting close to the end and I got prizes to give away. But I want to tell each and every one of you that you are already doing a great job. And I mean that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Teaching is not an easy task. And I know that you are giving your students uh, a safe space and all the support they need to be successful. So when you give them that safe space and you challenge them and you support them, they're going to develop their love of singing and their harmony skills. So please know that you are doing amazing things. You probably have a few more strategies today, which I hope you will take back to them. Now, I won't leave you without some more resources. So first and foremost, on our blog, we have uh, a couple of articles that have more resources and strategies, um, not only our resources, but other resources that we love. So I will give you a link to this in the email. And if you're looking for rounds and cannons, I have a comprehensive list for all ages. And if you are an auditory learner and you would prefer to hear a delightful conversation about rounds and cannons, Donna Rodenizer and I had a fabulous time recording this. Donna, uh, Donna lives in my province. We hang out all the time. So um, she's amazing. And uh, she's an educator and a composer friend of ours. And I do want to remind everybody that the Harmony Song Sale, all our Harmony Songs are on sale. They're 20% off. If you go to our website, the sale tab, they're all there. Take advantage of that because they go back up on July 1st. Um, I, uh, I want to just uh, tell everybody, if you are watching this on the replay or if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, that is how you get notification of our next live office hours. So I am going to be sending out an email to all the participants with all of the information. And um, my friends, I want to, uh, I want to, first of all, thank you for your time coming this evening. And we have a few more minutes. Minutes. So if anybody has any extra questions or questions that I did not answer in the presentation, I'm happy to answer them now. Otherwise, I'm going to wish you an incredible evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you may be. 
Um, and I hope to see you again soon. And I hope that you had a good time. So I'm going to stay on uh, if anybody has any other questions. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to let you go. And I'm wishing everybody the best. And I want to thank Mim, who got up extra early today <laughs> to help us. So thank you, Mim. Um, and Christina said, thank you so much for these practical and fun tools. It was wonderful. Thank you, Christina. It's so good to see you. So many of you have been to, uh, full, uh, to live office hours before. So it's nice to see you. And some of you have been at our live workshops, which is fabulous. Um, and it's always good to see you. So um, any questions, if you want to put them in the chat, I'm happy to answer them that way. Otherwise, I'll say, I'll say good day to you. All right, friends, thank you so much. And uh, from the team at Full Voice, as always, I am wishing you inspired teaching and happy singing. Thanks, everybody.